All right, today's lesson is on comparing and ordering rational numbers. So you're looking at different types of rational numbers, so maybe a decimal and a fraction, and deciding which one is larger, which one's smaller, are they equal? So understanding, okay, one is less than, or they're equal, or one is greater than. So let's say I give you two fractions, and we have to decide which fraction is bigger, which fraction is larger. And there's a couple different methods for this. One method is, let's create common denominators. When you have fractions with common denominators, it's actually quite easy to see which fraction is bigger. So, let's get started here. My first set of fractions, I have 4 fifths and 8 ninths. I need to decide which fraction is larger. Uh, let's get a common denominator. So uh, let's see, 5 and 9. Well, 5 times 9 is 45. So I could rewrite this, these fractions with common denominator 45. Okay, well, how do I do that? Let's get a different color. So if I multiply 5 by 9, I have to multiply my top number by 9. But my other fraction, I'd multiply by 5, top and bottom. So the left fraction, let's see, 4 times 9 is 36. And then 8 times 5 is 40. So I use this idea of common denominators. When I have a common denominator, it's clearly that I can see 40 out of 45 is going to be larger than 36 out of 45. So I can use a less than symbol, 36 45ths is less than 40 out of 45. Or I think in the assignment, you're asked to circle the larger fraction. Okay, my next set of fractions, negative one-third and negative three-eighths. So we can get a common denominator. Temporarily we can ignore those negative numbers, but we need to take them into consideration when we decide which fraction is bigger. All right, so common denominator. If I've got denominator eight over here, I can multiply numerator and denominator over here by eight. So this will turn into negative one times eight, negative eight, three times eight, 24. So now I can take the denominator three and multiply over here, times three times three. So that will give me negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 out of 24. So which fraction is bigger? Well, 9 is bigger than 8, but because they're negative, 9's a bigger negative, it's actually smaller. Here's my larger number. For this last example, um, why don't you pause the video? Try it on your own, and then come back and check your answer. All right, so let's see. 4 times 9, I got the common denominator of 36. And then um, I was able to multiply 9 to get 27 over 36, and then multiply 4 over here, 28 over 36. So this fraction is less than this fraction, which makes 7 ninths the bigger fraction. All right, so now on to the next method. So method two in determining which fraction is bigger. Uh, instead of common denominators, we will look at decimals. And we want to uh, convert fractions to decimals without a calculator. So we have to think back to a previous lesson. Um, in this case, let's see. I'm going to use the equivalent fraction method to help me turn these into decimals. So two fifths, I want to rewrite this as a number over 10, because I can double five to get 10, so I'll double two to get four. And then when we have a fraction with denominator 10, it's easy to turn into a decimal, four tenths, 
is 0 0.4. All right, so 21 fiftieths. Um, let's do same thing, equivalent fraction, but I can do denominator 100. So if I double 50, I'll get 100. If I double 21, I'll get 42. 42 hundredths is 0 0.42. So now I want to compare these two numbers. Because it's two decimal places long, I want to make this decimal two decimal places long. So I have a four and a four. The next decimal place is zero and a two. That two right there makes this number larger. So 21 fiftieths is larger than two fifths. All right, here's our second example. We're comparing two thirds and five eighths. So um, these ones don't work great for the equivalent fraction, getting a denominator 10 or 100. So we can do long division. Actually, 2 thirds is a fraction that I said you should have the decimal memorized. So let's think. 2 thirds, I know, is the decimal 0 0.6 repeating. So a bunch of sixes, or you can just use the repeating sign. All right, so 5 eighths uh, is not on the list of decimals you should have memorized. So let's do 5 divided by 8. 8 goes into 5 zero times. Add in our decimals. Add in a 0. 8 goes into 50 six times, and 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract, we get 2. 8 doesn't go into 2, so 0, bring a 0 down. 8 goes into 20 twice, and 8 times 2 is 16, minus 4, add a 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 40 five times, 5 times 8 is 40, we get the remainder of 0. So um, 5 eighths is the decimal 0 0.625. Five. So let's compare, kind of compare decimal place by decimal place. So I have a 6 compared to a 6, so they're tied. But then I have a 6 and a 2, so this fraction is uh, larger. 2 thirds is larger than 5 eighths. Alright, last example. Let's turn these into decimals. 1 fourth and 2 ninths. Well, both of these are on the memorized list, so memorizing those common decimals to fractions is definitely going to help you. 1 fourth is 0 0.25. 2 ninths is 0 0.22 repeating. So, they tie in the tenths, 2 and 2, but then this 5 beats this 2. Common mistake, just thought I'd talk about it real quick. If I write 0 0.25 versus 0 0.22222 on and on forever, common mistake is that students think because there's more numbers that that number's larger. But it doesn't matter because um, technically uh, this other number has an infinite amount of zeros after it and you just look at decimal place by decimal place. And the second a decimal place wins, it becomes the larger number. So 1 fourth is larger than 2 ninths. All right, here's the last thing for today's lesson. Um, we're going to take everything we've learned, plot rational numbers on a number line, and list these least to greatest. All right, so 2 fifths. Um, that is the decimal 0 0.4, and 0 0.4 is going to fall on the number line right about there. We're just kind of estimating, so 2 fifths is right there. Negative 0 0.34, so negative 0 0.34 is in between 0 and negative 1. So I have negative 0 0.34. 2 and 1 third, 
Uh, 2 and 1 third is 2.3 repeating. So I have to go over to the 2 and then 0.3, 2 and 1 third. Negative 1 and 1 ninth, that means I have to go to negative 1, but then go a little bit more than negative 1. So that's negative 1 and 1 ninth. Negative 1.75, well 0.75 is negative 1 plus a little bit more. Negative 1.75. And 4 ninths is 0.4 repeating. That one's a little tricky, but it's going to go very close to 2 fifths, but a little bit larger. So 4 ninths. All right, it's a little messy, but once you have all your numbers on a number line, you can list them least to greatest. So the far left one is negative 1.75. The next one is negative 1 and 1 ninth. Then negative 0 0.34, 2 fifths, 4 ninths, and 2 and 1 third. So there we have listing numbers, least to greatest. So we've been comparing rational numbers, which one's larger, which one's smaller, and now listing least to greatest. So there is your full lesson. Good luck.